Hey guys, today I'll be showing another project I've been working on, and uh, this video is also for Freddy, who owns this nice little multi -mug. Um So Freddy just going to make a video going over the whole functionality of it, so you know exactly what you're getting back. And uh, for those that are interested in what the multi -mug does, feel free to watch this video as well. Um, so anyways, this was, uh, this was not necessarily a restoration, it was more of a repair and preventive maintenance service on this particular unit. I uh, went through it and uh, repaired the, the issues it had. When this thing arrived, it would power on, no audio. Uh, I could not get any audio out of it, so I started scoping around. I saw that the oscillators both were running. I saw that the VCA was actually working, but the filter circuit was completely dead. There's no, uh, no filter at all. And what had happened is one component had failed at pulling excessive current, causing another component to fail. So it was about two, two components there that had bit the dust, um, just from the excessive current from the first component. So first component was primary failure, second component was just secondary failure because of the current draw. Um, so I took care of all that, and then I did all the preventive maintenance stuff, um, that put all new capacitors in it, Replace some of the other common failure op amps and stuff I see in these things and other uh, uh, components, which just I say get weak over time and start failing. So I took care of all that for you. Um, new key bushings. This one actually, uh, the key bushings were gone in this particular unit. I, I got it in and I lifted it up out of the box. You could hear it sounds like a rain stick. If any of you know what that is. And uh, the key bushings had just literally deteriorated and just fell, fallen off the actual uh, key stops. So all new key bushings, uh, key alignment, all that good stuff. Align the pressure bar, so got all that uh, set up for you. And just kind of gave it a good little cleaning. Nothing real fancy here, but just gave it a good cleaning for you so you, it's at least clean when you get it back. Still has your sticker on the side, as you can see. Um, just kind of give you a walk around here. And that's your seal number 2243. And uh, that cleaned up really nice. Also, you can notice also where the tuning uh, sets. That's after calibration. I did a full calibration on this unit. So your tuning's right at 12 o'clock. Maybe, maybe just slightly uh, before 12, but that's it's still well within the range. Um, let me put the camera on the tripod and I'll just start showing you how this thing works and how it sounds and all that good stuff. Give me just a second. Make sure this is set up. Yeah, okay. So anyways, we'll start just with uh, everything mixed. <laughs> working your aftertouch is working there uh, both oscillators are working we'll start with oscillator A which is the added expansion of the multi uh, for those that don't know the multi and micro Moog are the exact same instrument but the multi has expansion board with an extra oscillator and aftertouch and so it has some extra controls as well as some keyboard triggering modes and uh, uh, as well as some more uh, extra outputs so you could uh, control things better with CV so it's a really nice package. Uh, I really love the multi because of the extra features. So anyways, we'll start with oscillator 1. There's a wave shape. We'll turn the oscillator B back on so you can hear this thing goes to a fifth. Oscillator B is working. And then uh, we also got 
the octave range, uh, which it shares the same octave range for both oscillators. So. frequency so you actually got a control you can use this knob here for some really crazy crazy stuff um, that's oscillator uh, B we mix our two oscillators together Also, you got your doubling, which is just a divider off oscillator B. So if we go back to oscillator B, as you can hear, so that's that's your uh, doubling circuit, which you can add, actually add kind of a third oscillator. It's a sub oscillator is really what it is. modulation wheel so you get something like that um, also you can uh, I'll just show you this. this is one of my favorite features of this unit is you can actually add uh, it's like a pulse whip, but it's actually just variable wave. As without it. We can also set up the uh, uh, loudness contours for a different mode where excuse me so when you release you actually it'll as long as you hold a note it's going to contour with the release so you get something like this so you get that really thump oscillators in unison very close in tuning. We'll detune oscillator A just a bit. Because they do tend to cancel each other out when they're precisely in tune. Also calibrated the filter so it's in tune. So if we go to tone mode on the filter, we'll turn off the contour mount. So here's just your filter. I'll set up the octave. Put you to the oscillator. to the octave shields of the keyboard because it's still tracking the keyboard. We'll put a little uh, uh, L-film synthesis on that.
down with wave shape, and the wave shape responds, makes the filter respond different to the L film uh, frequency. Um, but you got the tone mode, you got your full mode, which turn the oscillator back. Well, so now you can get to some of those organ sounds. Offsets the emphasis control. So, you, and when you're in tone, it's, it's just self oscillating like crazy, and it doesn't really self oscillate in any other mode except when it's excited by an external frequency, so to speak. That's kind of how that works. Um, but we got that. I'll show you that the contours actually work. We'll start with the filter contour. We'll set this up here. So, so we'll go here. We'll actually go to tone. So right now we got a, we can do a really fast release. envelope. Um, we can also make that thing hold the release as long as I hold a note so you get something like this. So you get something like that. And then you've also got the uh, contour for the uh, loudness which is your VCA control. So let's open this filter up and put on the switch where you can it won't release until you let off the note. Um, then you've also got a release mode here which if you want a mixture of the of the two. And that's just like the switch on the mini mode, the decay switch. That works in a very similar manner. So you got that and you also got a glide here which I'll show you glide work. So you got your glide switch on this, which you don't have on the on the micro. Then you've also got uh, single or multi-trigger. So what we'll do here is we'll set up the filter here and you can hear that we only have one one trigger. It won't re trigger. Even though I'm holding a note, if we hit multi trigger, you can hear how that works. So that's functioning correctly. You've also got your ribbon here. We'll set this back up. I'll show you that the ribbon controller is working properly. Oscillator A only, which is a really cool function. I love the functionality of this unit. 
And then of course you can turn it on ribbon off altogether. And that's really nice because what you can actually do, and I, I'm not 100% sure because it's been a while since I've done this, but I think you can actually turn the ribbon off internally and you can actually assign the ribbon, uh, you can assign the ribbon externally. So if you don't want the ribbon control in this sense, you can have the ribbon control in an external synthesizer, which is a really cool uh, approach to this interface. Um, but anyways, that's really it. I will show you also that the noise source works. I didn't show you that. So you can hear, this is just your noise. But that's really it. The, the Multimog is a very, very cool synth. You can get a lot of different uh, tones out of it using the uh, frequency modulation of the filter and then the filter modes. And it's probably one of my favorite, favorite uh, Moog synthesizers just because it's, it's not the most, uh, you know, uh, flexible synth as far as, you know, octave ranges and that kind of stuff. But it just has a sound and it's very unique to the Moog, uh, the Moog family of synthesizers. Um, and actually the Micro Moog, which this is derived from, was designed by Jim Scott, who also worked on the Mini Moog. So it has a, it's just a very well laid out synthesizer. But uh, anyways, Freddie, I hope this video helps you out. Uh, I really do appreciate you giving me the opportunity to rebuild this thing for you, or, or get it uh, fully working again. And uh, for anybody else that's watching the video, I appreciate you watching. And uh, take care. There'll be more videos to come soon. Take care.